Hi there, this is Craig Beck, the Stop Drinking Expert, and today's video is uh, a response to Carrie, who sent me an email. Uh, basically, uh, Carrie wanted to know that um, how quickly, if she stops drinking, will she start to see the benefits of doing that? Uh, how long will it take to see repairs and restoration to health? How long before her brain is uh, rewired to being a non-drinking brain? Um, it's a good question, and I understand where it comes from, because we... You know, we love numbers. As human beings, we want a number. You know, we want someone to say to us, this many drinks a day is too much. And drinking this often and for this long is too much. We want a number so we can compare what we're doing to something else. We also want to know that if we do something that we don't particularly want to do, like stop drinking, we want to know when we're going to get the rewards for that. When will I feel better? When will I be paid back if I'm going to do this? So I understand where it's coming from. It's not quite as simple as you would like, Carrie, but I guess you knew that was coming. Look, you didn't become dependent on alcohol overnight. It doesn't work that way. It's not like heroin. You know, it takes a long time to get hooked to alcohol, uh, you know, sometimes decades. And what is happening during that process is that the alcohol and your response to it is rewiring your brain. It's physically creating tissue in your head to facilitate the drinking. It's changing the structure of your brain so that when you drink alcohol, it lights up like a Christmas tree. This is why we get into this problem with it, because we, you know, we, it's a learned addiction. The first time we taste alcohol, we know it tastes vile. We taste it as a kid when we sneak a bit of our father's whiskey and we go, ah, disgusting, yeah? And we think, how can anyone get addicted to that filth? It's disgusting, it's gross, it's horrible. And when we start our drinking career, we all start off on sweet drinks to help us into it with our training wheels on, you know? We go for the shandies and the sweet wine and the ciders and things like that. And then eventually we progress, we progress, we progress, and we end up on the hard stuff. Or we drink enough of the lower strength stuff to have the same effect. So look, uh, I've got some good news and some bad news for you. As long as you haven't done irreversible damage to your body, and I'm talking cirrhosis of the liver here, then your liver will repair itself. Back when I was a problem drinker, my liver, uh, liver enzyme levels were all over the place. I mean, it was ridiculous, embarrassing. They're perfectly normal now. I had a CT scan uh, just last week for an unrelated matter. Uh, they checked all my internal organs. Liver is perfect. So even though I had problems back then and I was on a fast track to having cirrhosis, my liver is absolutely perfectly healthy. It has repaired itself. I do not have a problem in that area anymore. Now, that's the good news. So your health will repair and the damage you have done, as long as it's not become permanent, will repair. I can't give you a time period because A, it doesn't matter. Just know that it's going to happen. Uh, and B, it's different for everyone. You know, it depends where you're starting from. Uh, it depends how much damage and what specific damage you've done with the alcohol. But just know that your body is an amazing thing and it will repair itself. Now, the bad news. Well, it's, it's, it's only bad news in a certain context. You're asking when will your brain chemistry go back to normal? It never will. It never will. You have built a system in your brain over the years that goes crazy. It goes hyperactive when you expose it to alcohol. And that will never go away now. This is what you've built over decades. Those, those sort of things have deep foundations. They don't go. If I drank alcohol now, I can tell you what will happen. I wouldn't like the taste of it. I would, I would notice how disgusting it tasted. And I would think to myself, hmm, maybe I can drink this stuff now. And then my brain would light up like a Christmas tree. And all those, all that wiring that I put in there over my years as a heavy drinker would start to reactivate. And tomorrow I would drink and the day after I would drink and the day after that I would drink. And before you know it, I would be back in the exact same loop I left all those years ago. Nothing will have changed a bit. I wouldn't be drinking less. I wouldn't be drinking in moderation. I wouldn't be able to control it. I wouldn't be drinking socially. I would be back in the exact same pattern that I was all those years ago. 
and the same will be true for you. Now you might think, well, this is a disaster, Craig. This is a disaster. It's not a disaster because all you have to do is not put poison in your mouth anymore. You've got to live your life not wanting to drink. You do not have to live your life forcing yourself to avoid alcohol because that is misery. That's the AA way of doing things, to, to, to tell you that you are broken, you're a damaged person, you're a poor, weak-willed individual who can't control alcohol and for the rest of your life you must force yourself to be a good boy or a good girl. That is not living. That is torture. So the only way to give up this attractively packaged poison is to condition your brain to understand the truth behind it, to understand that there is not one single benefit to drinking alcohol. Everything that we've been told is a lie and that you don't want it in your body anymore. Now, as long as you keep that mindset, as long as you understand deeply and profoundly that alcohol is poison and nothing more, then you don't have to worry about the permanency of the wiring in your brain because you're not going to expose yourself to alcohol. You're not going to go back to social drinking. You're not going to drink poison in moderation because it's insane to do that. You know, change the drug. You know, if I, if I came to you and said, look, I, I've decided that I'm going to go back to moderate heroin use, would you advise me that was a good thing to do? Would you say, good for you, Craig? <laughs> Come back into the fold. Enjoy, it. Enjoy your heroin in moderation. Or would you say, that's a terrible idea, Craig. It's insane. Don't do that. I think it's the latter, isn't it? It doesn't even have to be heroin. I mean, imagine if I came up to you and said, look, you know, I've been off the glue now for two years. I've not sniffed any glue or any solvents for two years. I'm thinking of going back to moderate glue sniffing. Would you tell me that was a great idea? Unlikely. So don't go back to the drinking of poison for fun. It's insane. And you won't have a problem. Your health will get better. You'll have more energy. You'll have more vitality. Your relationships will get better. Your career will improve. Your finances will improve. Do you need me to go on? I can't give you a time scale because it's different for everyone. Just know that every one of those things that I just mentioned is going to get better for you as soon as you get this filth out of your life. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, drop me an email at the website www.stopdrinkingexpert.com.